One of our favorite segments on Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide, when we get to have them, of course, is something that I, I think excites and titillates the right wingers, the trolls in our audience. You know, uh, there's only so much of Rudy Giuliani's face you can stare at where you're like, Jesus Christ, he looks like uh, if RoboCop was 150 years old and took his helmet off. Um, but in uh, this particular case, like some people are like, just every time this fella I'm about to put on screen pops up, they're just like, that That does it for me. That flips my switch. That pushes my buttons. That uh, um, whistles my whirly gig. Yep, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Ben Shapiro Show from The Daily Wire. This is a show that we often like to refer to as Ben Shapiro stares at his laptop. This is the entirety of, I, I, I'm guessing, I mean, we do segments on this and I've never seen any difference. Occasionally speaks to screen, but, uh, to the camera rather, so he's talking directly out. Usually it's when he's selling something. Like he does the ads directly to camera, which is kind of amazing. And, but the rest of the time, he's just, it's like he sat down and they just opened his laptop like, just read this shit today. Just fill air. Just do it. Just, we got to print, we got to pump this shit out. It's not like, it's not like you're going to, actually contrive a, a theory on something. You're a reaction monkey. That's what we all do. Get at it. So he waxes up his cal caterpillars and staples them to his forehead and sits down in the, um, I guess the Ben Shapiro AM Toledo morning show set that he, he bought everything from when they went out, when Toledo went out of business and he just had the Ben Shapiro sign made for him by somebody on Fiverr who does woodworking. And then he got a sticker uh, from Teespring to put on his laptop that says The Daily Wire because you got to put the title of the fucking business somewhere. And uh, this is a guy with uh, nearly as many subscribers on his own channel as, um, as Russell Brand has, um, four times as many as Jimmy Dore has, and actually, uh, the Daily Wire itself, has, you know, is, is in, in its own way is kind of a, you know, it's the it's the TYT of the right. There's a lot of overlap there as far as the size, what the kind of product they put out. The only difference is Daily Wire is trying to make like um, these weird semi-patriotic. Uh, it, it's they're like Hallmark movies with heavy weapons um, as part of like Daily Wire entertainment because. At some point, people are going to recognize they just make shit up. And so you might as well just change brands. But luckily, this is short. This is called, How Much Influence Does Trump Still Have With Republicans? Now, this, this, this video is not a good sign. The fact that he's asking the question, and I don't know where he goes with it. And this, I, as far as I know, Shapiro's never been a true fan. He's an Orthodox Jew. He obviously takes family very seriously. I, you know, I, I think most of his arguments are, are, ridiculous and overstated and kind of um the are dunking arguments not based on on real human beings it's why it's why fights around statistics so you can avoid uh solutions and really just focus on the your crowd xenophobic reactions to things and you can just go see see i told you see i told you see i told you and that's that's the show um we're never going to solve this but you know there's that because there's other people trying to stop us from solving this as i read on my laptop right now. So at least he's more honest than Don Jr., I suppose, who just, you know, with the post-it notes around his screen on his phone at whatever one of his dad's houses he's at. Okay, so let's see. How much, I'm, I'm curious, how much influence does Trump still have with Republicans? And is this going to be a positive video considering the direction of the polls recently around January 6th, which I'm going to say it don't look particularly good. Speaking of Donald Trump and the kind of power he holds over the Republican Party. Oi, that was loud. Um, was that what we were doing? Um, also, um, you know, if you're cutting clips, um, I guess we're now, is that supposed to tease me? And like, oh my God, he did another video mentioning this? I have to go back. The answer is on the local level, not much. So what oh. I mean by this is that Donald Trump's endorsement can move a few votes, maybe a few. Like, yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> They can move them away from the voting booth, if that's what you mean. Like in Pennsylvania, for example. Dr. Yeah, he can make people stay home. Dr. Oz over over Dave McCormick. Maybe it made a difference there. That was a competitive race anyway. Maybe it made a difference in a very competitive primary. In Ouch. Yeah, I don't think this is going in a positive direction. I don't think, I, I'm just saying, 
Ben, you're you're going to get some 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 hate mail, and it's uh, it's going to be there's going to be a lot of the same words used to describe George Soros in those emails. I'm just guessing. I don't wish them upon you. I think it's wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised. So just brace yourself. In the Ohio Senate race, where JD Vance, with Trump's endorsement, emerged victorious, so he can move. Ow. He emerged. Ow. Ow. Emerged victorious. A few tens of many. The the guy who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, who had a lot of money, beat the rest. The parade of nobodies. Thousands of votes. But he's also endorsed a bunch of candidates who have just gotten skunked. I mean, anyway, skunked. That's the that's the uh, Ben Shapiro word for getting trounced, stomped. Right. He endorsed David Perdue in Georgia. He got just blown out. Uh, twice, by the way, just for the record. Uh, he also endorsed him <clears throat> uh, and Kelly Loeffler in Georgia last year or you know, year before last. And uh, well, no, it was last year, technically, because it was in the it was January. And he also just lost a couple of other races in Georgia. I feel like I I wish I had a whoop, 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 whoop. Do I have a let's see, do I have anything remotely like that? Do I have a trombone? There you go. Yeah, that's not, that's not bad. Okay, so we might need that more often, I think. Let me raise that up a little bit, so. All right, so he, he lost a, a race, Mike Collins versus Vernon Jones. He had endorsed Vernon Jones. Mm -hmm. Mike Collins blew out Vernon Jones, 75 to 25. Um, and again, grown man reading from his laptop. You can't, by the way, that's Trump's scalp rolling across the screen. Um. You, you, you can't look up from that. You can't, you got all that shit there. You can't get a teleprompter. You can't just reflect that screen here. So you're talking to this and then you can scroll like this. You're obviously not afraid to hand scroll while you're doing it. You're, you're a hands-on kind of guy. You buy wood and buy the plank in a bag from Home Depot. You're not afraid to get your hands dirty. Uh, <sighs> what it seems like is if Donald Trump targets you and decides that you are an enemy, then it is unlikely that you win. Uh-huh. So there's a difference between Donald Trump endorsing a person, which I don't think has a lot of power, and Donald Trump destroying people. Donald Trump still has the power to destroy, but I'm not sure that he has. Yeah, so it makes him the perfect Republican candidate. That's why I, Ben Shapiro, am going to vote for him next time, because it, you're not really a man unless you can buy a piece of wood, put it in a bag, go home and destroy something. Creation is for wussies and more to the point, women. It's the power to build. And the question is going to be, what happens when he tries that power of destruction against somebody who actually has the loyalty of Republican base? Uh, he means DeSantis, I think. Like, if you look forward to 2024, what ha like, he actually tried to destroy Brian Kemp in Georgia. It wasn't just that he endorsed David Perdue. He actually talked about how Brian Kemp was terrible and horrible and no good and very bad. So it didn't work. So it doesn't always work that way. And Brian Kemp won because he had earned the loyalty of the Republican voting base in Georgia, despite Trump's anger at Brian Kemp. Well, in 2016, Donald yeah. Trump ran directly against the Bushes. I mean, that, that, he ran against Jeb. And then everybody... Yeah, and, and nobody saw... You know, everybody was like, but, but Jeb is unbeatable. How, how, do, how does anyone top the charisma, the sharp political, domestic and foreign policy mind of Jeb? else he sort of brushed off he's the most famous person in the field there were 87 people in the field and he was able to run that gauntlet and, and win the nomination right yeah it was a squeaker it was always bullshit we know this what happens when he is up against say governor DeSantis? now the media are, are itching for this fight they want the fight they, they yeah the media wants it yeah that's who wants it the media DeSantis doesn't want to do this Republicans don't want DeSantis to run. As a matter of fact, they're all writing letters right now. Please let Trump, don't leave him alone. Leave Trump alone. Why would you just let him run again? And they're, you know, but it's the media that wants this. They want it so bad. They want to destroy Donald Trump using their stooge, Ron DeSantis. They want Trump to attack DeSantis. They want DeSantis to attack Trump. Start some sort of inter- Internecine warfare. It start internecine warfare uh, between Trump and DeSantis. Um, n no. I'm sure they're looking forward to reporting on it, but that's how Trump operates. That's the point.
All he does is shit on people. It's the only way he gets ahead. And if he ever it runs up against anybody who doesn't give a fuck, he gets reduced to ash. I mean, that's honest to God. The uh, Biden going, Will you just shut up, man. Like that kind of stuff was something that none of the guys on the Republican side had the guts to say to his face. You had people like Ted Cruz were like, Donald, you're a coward. Yeah, like miles away in front of cameras. And then he went and kissed his ass later. Biden wasn't like that. And if Hillary Clinton had turned around while he was lurking and going, would you sit down? What's wrong with you? She would have won the election. I'm dead serious. It was so narrow. Yeah. DeSantis is smart enough to avoid that right now. <laughs> Is he? He doesn't want to fight with Donald Trump. No, he didn't want to. The media is trying to make him. First of all, he Netflix is forcing him to. It's big tech. He's not even sure, I think, whether he wants to run in 2024. Yeah. I mean, why? He's having such a great time running Florida. I mean, he's driving out Disney. Uh, they had to hide their COVID numbers. I mean, that's a sweet gig if you can get it. Considering that he still has to win his reelection effort here. He still has to win his reelection effort in 2022 in, in Florida, which he will. DeSantis is far and away. So he'll win it and then he'll declare for 2024 and then they'll have to have a special election and Nikki Fried will get it. So so basically Florida will go through this bullshit just for four months of, of DeSantis. Or he's going to run as governor, wasting a, you know, a year of that and just go, yeah, I'm splitting. Wait, according to polls. And then Nikki Fried's going to win because she's you know, <laughs> in the special election. So he'll, what he's going to do, eight months of damage. The most likely Republican to win who is not named Trump. And so the Democrats are trying to- What are you looking at? Look, what, you don't have to look at your laptop to say the Democrats are looking to whatever. This is opinion, say it. To generate some sort of fight between DeSantis and Trump. It seems to me- Nobody's trying to generate a fight between DeSantis and Trump. They're two assholes. We are expecting it. Nobody, when you're watching one of those videos that shows an anaconda and an alligator going at it, no one's like, go get him, alligator. Fuck him up, anaconda. You're just like, uh-oh. <laughs> Mortal enemies. That there is who, uh, they're both reptilian. You'd think they'd be on the same side. And yet, let's sit back and watch the fun. It's a world in which DeSantis just says, listen, Mr. President, I'm really, really happy for everything that you did while you were president. But fuck you. Also, we have a... An 80-year-old president right now. You are 77 years old. Oh, slam. Go after his age. I believe that my governance record in Florida speaks for itself, and that's why. Well, it does, yeah, but not in a good way. I should be elected president because I want to take my policies, which have been very effective. I picked effective fights. He doesn't even say a bad word about Trump. Yeah, he didn't have to. His, his, this is Ben Shapiro. This is his audience of one moment. If he can get the DeSantis wing after Trump moves on, and he weasel, he's like the Steve Bannon for DeSantis. Oh. Yeah. White House spokesperson Ben Shapiro. Shortest uh, um, uh, White House press corps briefings in history. Also shortest person doing it, I think. Pretty sure. He just goes right over the top. Right, right over the top of the podium. Miss the, I mean, you could dodge questions easier than anybody. And I think there's a word where, world where, where that is effective. That's particularly effective if Donald Trump continues to focus in on January 6th like a laser beam. Uh, or, well, November 3rd. <laughs> He's not focusing on January 6th like a laser beam. He's panicking over the fact that he lost. It's not the same thing. Because Democrats focusing on January 6th ain't gonna shift Republican votes. But Donald Trump's- Ain't gonna shift Republican votes. Democrats focusing- on January 6th, let's see, okay, uh, January 6th committee, I'm polling, let's see, what's, what's the current? Um, is it Quinnipiac poll, Quinnipiac poll. 64% think the January 6th attack on the Capitol was planned. Quinnipiac University National Poll finds number of Americans viewing rising prices as a crisis climbs. Okay, here we go. This is the extremism. Uh, vast majority of Americans, 77, think extremism from within the country is a bigger threat to the United States than extremism from another country. Um, by the way, that's a combination of, uh, you know, right-wingers who think uh, CRT, communism, blah, 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 is, is a, you know, and rioters and lawlessness is a threat. And the... Uh, you know, the left who thinks that, you know, maggots that are armed are scary. <laughs> uh, 
Um, near, nearly six in, okay, rising prices. Where is it? President Biden, abortion. Let's see, it's January 6th. Do you approve? Uh, okay, Biden, there we go. Da, da, da. Where's the Jan 6? Handling the economy. Uh, da, da, da. Virus, yada, yada. Political candidate believe the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump. Are you more likely to vote for that candidate? Let's vote for that. Okay, just, you believe him. As you think of our financial situation, where is it? Do you think that prices in the economy is a crisis? Okay, this is pretty broad. Do you think that rising prices in the United States is a crisis, a problem, but not a crisis or not a problem at all? What a stupid, generic question. How much control do you think the president has on uh, overinflation? A lot, some, only a little or not at all. This is probably the most uh, telling. Um, a lot, 36% uh, believe that he has a lot. Republicans think he has a lot of control. 65% of Republicans think the president has a lot of control over inflation. Democrats think he's, 10% think they got a lot. The vast majority think only a little. Almost uh, like the Republicans are off the charts with a lot. Uh, Independents, 34%. They're definitely higher than Dems, but they're half as many as the Republicans. 35 say some, 20 say only a little, 9 says none at all, da da da. Uh, 34%. Uh, men, 38% of women. More women think the president has a lot of control over inflation than men. That's interesting. Yes, 29%. No, 44%. So more people say uh, yes, no. All right. Oh, and they gave a yes, no versus a ver um, an amount. I guess. Uh, so 31 to 31 is even, yes or no. 32, 18, only a little, 5 and don't know, can't not answer. Okay. Uh, wait, how much problem with gasoline? Where's the Jan 6 stuff in this, you pricks? Hold on. I know there it's in there somewhere. Back up. One, two. January 6th committee is reaching its audience. 64% uh, of the January 6th committee's biggest task is getting people to care. Voter backing plan. Uh, voter backing for Jan 6 panel ticks up after primetime address. This is the morning console. And this, this is before it even... Uh, um, what's his name's uh, Bowers? Uh, let's see. Uh, after a dip, voter backing of House Jan Six panel is on the rise. That's the that's the loop. This is the all voters from uh, July of 2021, December 2021, May 20. When it's not going on, as soon as it starts going on, whoop, it's starting to go back up again. This is the no, don't know or don't have an opinion. 14 percent, you know, hovering around the same, but 51 percent. Uh, approve, uh, disapprove, all voters. Democrats are 84%, 45% of independents. That's bad news for Republicans. And 22% aren't sure, but that's the nature of being an independent. 33% don't like it. Those are, these are all the Republicans who are ashamed they voted for Bush and Trump, but are still, they're not ready to hang up their jersey yet. And then here's the Republicans. Boy, is that telling. 67% hate it. 20%, 13%. Now again, are you asking the same number of people? And are there the same number of people? That's the problem Republicans have. These the, the polling here is that there are fewer humans that are Republican in the country than there are humans who view themselves as Democrats or or, or you know green side independents in this in this little Christmas graph that they throw up. Um, so it is absolutely moving things. Seeming distracted is going to because one thing about DeSantis in Florida is the guy's a weapon. Yeah, well, he's certainly not a, a vaccine or a cure or a bandage or a shovel. He's he's not useful enough to be a tool. I'll give you that. DeSantis absolutely knows his opponents. He knows how to fight them. He picks winning issues. So what does this bode for 2024? It shows. Yeah, get on with it. That Trump is not invulnerable. Yes, we, we know this. What these primaries shows that Trump does not have the sort of stranglehold the media thinks he has on the Republican Party. And by media, he means uh, all of his friends. More broadly. We're oh, I'm not doing an ad. I'm not doing it. So, I mean, it's not much of a dunk, but it's a dunk. It's there. It's a bit of a dunk. Bit of a, like a Republican bend. And that's the kind of video that's coming up after the Jan 6 uh, committee has been meeting. You're going to see more of those.